Hey everybody, Doug Walker here. I am going to be talking about Doctor Strange. Uh, apologies that Rob isn't here. Uh, he is actually going to review it on Awesome Comics. And uh, I was going to be on there, but uh, I'm going out this weekend to help Brad shoot his movie. So uh, this is just my fast little vlog, my two cents on uh, what I thought about it. Uh, it's getting really good reviews. I think last time I saw it was at like 91% or something like that. So a lot of people are liking it. And yeah, I liked it too. It's just another decent, good Marvel movie. Um, you know, it's not perfect, uh, but I, I don't know if people are going to be shouting like this is perfect. What What is perfect about it is its visual style, uh, which you've seen in the trailers and such, and it's not one of those movies where it's like, oh, well, just best stuff was in the trailer. No, there's a lot of really, really cool stuff. And it's uh, fun, and it's got some great comedy to it, and the characters are likable. The action is so creative. It's kind of like they saw Inception and said, oh yeah? We're gonna do that times ten! Because uh, it's kind of the same ideas. It, it reminded me a lot of that, of like the city folding and moving and running across, you know, upside down rooms and buildings and such. And, uh, so it has that feel, but again, I think because it's also a comic book movie, uh, you could sort of go even more, and because it's Marvel, you know they have a ton of money, they're gonna throw a ton at it, so it looks really great. On top of that, just the surreal imagery is phenomenal. Uh, this... I know a lot of people are probably going to be like, oh, well, I got to toke up and go in and watch it. I wouldn't advise that uh, because some scenes are fine with that, but there's some other scenes, like the first time he gets zapped into whatever you want to call it, the other realm. Uh, it's, it's pretty fast and intense, and they throw a lot of stuff at you, and it's great. You don't need drugs for it. It'll make you feel high. Um, so uh, all of that is really, really cool and really good. Uh, the basic story is that it's... Um, uh, Cumberbatch plays a guy named Doctor Strange, uh, who is a doctor, uh, and he's kind of Tony Starkish. honestly, maybe a little too similar, but he brings his own flair to it, you know, he makes it his own thing, and he, uh, is this phenomenal doctor, and he gets in a car accident where his hands get really scratched up, and that's it. Uh, what I mean by that is, if you see this car crash, this is like an over-the-top cartoony car crash like car hits him he spins around goes off a cliff while still spinning hits the ground just tumbles around all this stuff and everything and then lands in this river and it's like upside down like this and he wakes up and he has all these things in his hands and like some cuts and bruises cut to months later oh my hands oh no my hands and it's like dude how do you still have a spleen <laughs> it's ridiculous but uh uh, you'll find the whole movie kind of works this way. If you're looking for plot holes, you'll find plenty. Uh, but I don't think people are when they see a Marvel film or even a comic book film. They're kind of looking for the motivations, uh, to carry them through and the likability of the characters. And uh, that is what carries it through. Even when they're unlikable, like this guy, you know, has this, uh, Dr. A works with and, you know, kind of on-again, off-again relationship. And she's been taking care of him and he just friggin', you know, just blows up on her and says some really tough, mean things. And even the, everyone in the audience was just like, oh. And yet you still like this dude somehow. Uh, and I think because they do show that he tries to come back from it, he tries to be better, and he is, again, sort of that Tony Starkish archetype where it's like he can be so unlikable, but there's just... There is this charm, there is this intrigue, there is this passion that sort of makes you want to follow him that somehow it doesn't make you hate him. And I don't know what the magic formula is or the magic balance, but uh, but they got it. They got it with him, the guy with Tony Stark. Sometimes they almost lose it with Tony Stark. There are times where I'm just like, come on. Here's my address. Come on. Um, but it could just be the actors. The actors are so good and the editing is so tight and the writing's so tight. Um, so he wants his gift back. He wants his hands back because they shake now. Again, unbelievable he has hands at all or any body parts. But, uh, so he goes and he finds this ancient temple where he finds the Ancient One, and she shows him how to, you know, manipulate reality and how everything is of the spirit and a lot of Eastern philosophies and such. And, uh, he learns and there's this evil bad guy who wants to take one of the many magic books in this library and wants to use it for evil to let this evil universe bad god come in. Again, comic books. Um, and uh, destroy everything because he lost everything a long time ago and he's like, I want to destroy time, I want to destroy... Just typical 
Marvel villain who's kind of boring, and you've seen him a million times. But to its credit, out of all the boring Marvel villains, this one probably is the most interesting in his boredom. What I mean by that is his delivery is very deadpan, but it's kind of enjoyably deadpan. He has this very controlled look, just very, you know, but when he needs to say something funny, he has this great contemplation, and there's this great scene where Strange, he's in this, uh... Uh, he's in this room of all sorts of weird artifacts and weapons that can do strange things that he doesn't understand, and he finds one and he holds it to the guy, and the villain goes, huh, like that, and, you know, Cumberbatch is like, aha! And the villain looks at him and goes, you don't know how to use that, do you? He goes, uh... And he just tosses it at him, but the way he delivers that, you don't know how to use that, do you? It's this wonderful sort of inner calm. It's like, maybe that's the fun of him, is that there is kind of this inner calm to him that makes him a little bit more interesting than the other Marvel villains, but until then, Loki's still the best. Um, a little weird, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's not what you're focusing on, though. I mean, Marvel is much more about the heroes than it is the villains. And, well, in the movies, I should say. Uh, the comics, the, the villains are pretty good. Um, so, yeah, and it's all about them trying to stop this guy from opening the portal, which, to be fair, isn't just a laser in the sky, at least this time. I'm so sick of those beams going in the sky and opening up the clouds. Uh, this one's pretty trippy. And that's the best way I can describe it. It's trippy, and it's a comic book movie, and it combines them, and it really has fun with them. Uh, it never goes too abstract. It's always aware it's a Marvel comic book movie. But the nice thing about it, too, is that you... You swear they're listening to us, which I think is so great, because a lot of people have been saying, you know, these Marvel movies are good, but I'm getting a little tired of all the connections, all the cameos, and all the, hey, here, here's Iron Man, and he just, hello, and he flies by, whatever, and, and they take that out in this one. Like, I think they mentioned the Avengers once, you see, like, the building once, but there's not any cameos that I remember, uh, and they do build up stuff for the future movies, which, again... Are, are a little weak. Let me put it this way. If you are looking for stuff to not like in this movie, first of all, why are you seeing the movie, <laughs> if that's the case? Second, um, you're gonna find them. There's a lot of things that don't make sense in this movie, and uh, the main villain's motivation is explained. The other villain that they're hinting at at the end does not feel very well explained, and I can't act like I don't get why that is, because there's a lot of explaining in this movie, and it's kind of amazing you stay with it as long as you do, because when you really, there's a lot of great visuals and stuff, but it's kind of like, wow, I'm just realizing all the stuff in terms of talking that they throw at you. It's a lot of information, and you do follow it just enough, but it's also just enough to sort of say, wait, this guy's gonna be bad now because of that, and uh, this person doesn't get better security around this place. That's probably my biggest problem. The security for these books and these techniques is the freaking worst. Like, I actually laugh out loud every single time someone breaks into this library. It actually opens up with the world's worst security. This guy's in this library, and here's these books and these very pointless chain locks. Uh, you know, obviously not gonna do a thing, and they just... Four guys come in, like, hold him up, cut off his head, and then just steal a book. Actually, not even a book, a page. And, you know, the ancient one's like, ow. And she goes after and tries to stop him, but even folding buildings and stuff can't quite do it. Uh, so now they have to up security. They get another guy <laughs> to go in there and watch the books. And guess what? He sucks at it. Like, Doctor Strange figures out how to teleport and stuff like that, and he just teleports these little hands that go in and grab the books, almost like a cartoon, and it's like, it's one guy! What? The, he's listening to music <laughs> while this is going on? And then at the very end, like, you know, the ancient building of whateverness is about to be attacked, and it's like a super important building that can't be attacked, so you see them all line up. The guy that protects the library, he's the leader of this, and he goes in, he's like, don't let anybody get inside. And then you see Doctor Strange show up, and just, the building's toppling over, and I just, how can you not laugh at that? Just how awfully protected the ancient secrets and the world blowy up things are. I mean, these are like, <laughs> it's like information on how to just unleash bad God, <laughs> you know, coming in to destroy everything. And th th it's one guy, one guy who doesn't even do his job very well. Uh, 
On top of that, if you want to get into technicals, there's all sorts of things of like, wait, if they could bend this, why couldn't they bend that? If they could use this as a weapon, why couldn't they use it here? It's sort of all that Marvel, X-Men technical stuff that if you really think about it, doesn't add up at all, but I think that is kind of the leeway that you give with it being a comic book movie because that's, like I said, it's not what you're looking for. You're looking for the characters being interesting and the story being engaging and an excuse to have some really cool action and visuals. And when it does slip out of those continuities, you know, the, the logical inaccuracies, you... It's not too distracting, you know, it's one of the things where you're so distracted by how well everyone else is doing and the action is and the visuals and the ideas and the characters that you, you're not distracted by it. Uh, unless you really want to go looking for it, which if you do, there's plenty. There are tons, tons of things that don't make sense. Um, but you don't want to see that. You want to see Bandit Cumberbatch put on the cool cape put on the really bad American accent. Uh, he's he's very Hugh Laurie in this. Which a lot of people fell for Hugh Laurie, so maybe he will here too. I, I thought it was pretty fake. Um, but he's fine. You should have just made him British. Half of it takes place in Britain anyway. You should have just made him a Brit. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those films where it's like it came out and visually I was blown away because we saw it in IMAX and 3D. And we usually don't like to see movies like this. This one's worth it. This is definitely like one of the top four or five 3D IMAX movies I've seen. Uh, because they do new stuff with the technology. Actually, before played, they had a trailer for Rogue One in 3D. And it was not good 3D. Like, it was just blurry and sloppy. You couldn't focus on anything. I'm just like, oh, no. Like, is this what... Doctor Strange is gonna be, but it wasn't. And to give you an idea how good this 3D is, it opens up uh, in this dark room, sort of this dark uh, temple, and here's this uh, pillar. The pillar is completely black, like it's in the dark, and you're going past it. Even though it's completely in the dark, it feels like it's really close to you. Like, that's good 3D. That's very impressive 3D, especially you usually need a lot of light to make 3D work. But they they got that. I don't know what they did, but they got it. Did it very, very well. Um, so I would advise you're going to see it, see it on IMAX, see it 3D. It is worth the extra money uh, and putting on the annoying glasses. It is worth it. Uh, so this is one of the few. I, I mean, I'm thinking like... Which ones was I like? like? Hugo, I think I said that. Uh, How to Train Your Dragon, I think I said that. Um, you know, and Avatar. So, yeah, that's, uh, you know, just about four I can think of that had, like, you know, just primo amazing 3D. Um, trying to think. Anything else? Anything else? Uh, it's just a fun comic book movie. I mean, it is exactly what it is. I don't think story-wise or character-wise it's among, like, one of the best of the Marvel movies, you know, especially after Civil War, which was so well done. Um, but, but it's extremely entertaining. Uh, every single time you think like, oh man, there's a lot of talking in this, it goes to the cool action scenes. Every time you think the action scenes might be going on too long or you want change of environment or something, they do that. So they sort of give you everything you want just at the right time or and maybe just as you're starting to get a little bored of it, but everyone's going to be different. Uh, so I really enjoyed it. If you want to nitpick it, you definitely can. Uh, I have not read the comics. I know nothing about Doctor Strange, uh, so I have no idea how close they got these characters or not. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of like, how do, the best way to put it, it's every Marvel movie you've ever seen, but I mean that in a good way. It, you just kind of look forward to these, and the one plus it has is the visual style, which, I mean, this must have just been a designer's wet dream. I mean, like, it looks gorgeous. All the things they throw at you and the speed they throw at you and the technology they use to bring to life. Uh, Rob and I were talking, like, we said, th this is what CG is made for. You know, we're not anti-CG, but we do think it's overused everywhere. This is a movie where it's like, yes, use it. it, it just engulf it. I mean, this is where it belongs, and these kind of visuals and ideas. And it really takes advantage of it, and it really takes advantage of the uh, 3D as well. Especially the scenes where you can kind of, they're like ghost people, and you can see through them. Like, in a movie, that's nice. They're just kind of transparent, some other parts aren't, or whatever. But in 3D, uh, especially there's one scene where two ghost people are talking to each other, and you can kind of see through him, and he can kind of see through her, but it's not like that lame effect where because he's in front of her you can't see her then it's like no you can kind of see him to see her and it's 
really well done. In 3D, it just looks so, so good. So definitely advise you seeing it that way. Um, yeah, fun movie. Uh, like I said, it's not maybe it, it probably isn't like one of my top three favorite marvel movies or anything like that but it's just a good standard fun entertaining visually exciting movie and uh, definitely worth your time so that's my two cents don't forget to check out awesome comics you can see what rob thought of it and uh, i shall talk to you guys later take care